there's no better way to celebrate this than just look around. Look at your neighbor. This is a, a marvelous gathering and a great tribute uh, to the first responders and a great memorial that you all would come out on this warm day and honor uh, those lives and the current uh, first responders that are that are here and those that are even now at their duty stations serving us. Well, Pastor Earls, uh, Commissioner Ring Erickson, first responders, distinguished guests, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. September 11th, 2001, a date everyone here knows and every school child learns that will be forever etched into our individual and collective memory of dates of tremendous significance. Some because we remember it as it was happening and others too young to remember will be told that this is a date they must never forget. I want to take you to another date a date which is not a date of memorial, but a date reflecting hope in the creation of a new nation, July 4th, 1776. A date also etched into our minds and which we want our children to know. Many have committed to memory the phrase from the preamble to the declaration, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How we relate and respond to these two dates are not so different, however. Our founders knew that achieving and keeping a free society was going to be a difficult task and that we should never lose our understanding that the price of freedom is high. Only those with knowledge of what the tyrannical governments are capable of doing to their citizens and the courage to stand up against those who would take our freedoms away will be those who will enjoy their freedoms for very long. But what we also learned on 9-11 is that we must stand together and courageously battle those forces that would tear down this country and all it stands for. So ours is a battle against evil forces. But it's also a constant struggle to be a nation which knows and understands what liberty means. This necessitates a vital and robust education system, both public and private. While we must always provide a national defense through a well-trained and ready military, it also means that we are committed to teaching our citizens the responsibility of citizenship. Without a highly educated and well-trained citizenship, our hope for a nation that continues to be one where the unalienable rights to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, though given to us by our Creator, can be forfeited by us due to our failure to be a people who knows that vigilance does not mean only vigilance against foreign or domestic enemies, but also vigilance against ignorance, complacency, self-centeredness, and laziness. Amen. America has known great freedom and prosperity for reasons too numerous to recount here, but her preservation and success in a world where most countries have only experienced political strife and economic deprivation has been not in small measure attributable to a citizenry that could claim strong families, strong communities, strong schools, and therefore a strong nation. Think then of who we have been that sets us apart. You don't have to go any further than to look around you, to look at those also whose memory we honor today. Who here that are old enough to remember could forget the firefighters and the police who entered the danger of those burning towers to rescue their fellow citizens putting duty ahead of their own safety. Or those citizens of Flight 93 that were not going to let the hijackers use another passenger jet to wreak havoc 
as others had already done to the towers in the Pentagon. 342 firefighters and 60 law enforcement officers died heroically going into those buildings seeking to save the lives of others, only to lose their own. 2,000 more were injured. In this we observe and remember great courage and wonder if we could be, uni be a uniformed first responder and rush into a burning tower or wrestle an armed terrorist aboard a hijacked plane. I'm not sure many of us could answer that question until such a time might occur in our own lives. There are, however, those among us who we also honor today who are our first responders that have answered this question time and time again. It seems that courage and selflessness is in their DNA. We also are here to honor these super citizens who serve and protect our community and express our deep gratitude to them. But for the rest of us, we do not need to wait for that day of testing to meet the responsibilities of citizenship that we have before us now and every day that we are given to wake up in a, the freest nation ever to exist. Also, what better way to honor the memories of those who died in 9-11 and express our gratitude to our own community first responders than to know and fulfill our responsibilities of citizenship. And what are some of these responsibilities? Be informed. We live in the age of the internet and endless information, but what do we spend most of our time filling our heads with? Are the things we devote ourselves to learning adding to our ability to keep and defend the freedom that allows us to speak freely and easily to one another through blogging or tweeting or Facebooking? Are we taking time to teach our children to know and understand our nation's history and the price has been paid to preserve these freedoms? This responsibility doesn't end at the schoolhouse door. Parents, you are your children's first and most effective teacher. What are you teaching them? Not only with your what you instruct them in, but also what they learn from you by watching and concluding that what is actually important to you can be seen by how you act. But let me say, no one should doubt the contributions of those who've chosen a career of teaching. I can think of no profession in addition to our first responders that is more vital and central to the preservation of our society and country than those who are in the profession of educating our children and grandchildren. Vote and be willing to serve on juries when called. It goes without saying that if we didn't vote, we wouldn't any longer have a democracy. Is it responsible citizenship to say, I don't want to vote, but we'll let others decide who will serve me in government? If it's the responsibility of anyone, it is the responsibility of everyone. We cannot expect others to raise our children, just as we cannot expect others to choose our leaders. But recall that the first obligation of a citizen is to be informed. Only an informed electorate will choose the good leaders that it wants and needs. Jur jury duty is no less important. In this country, our framers ensured that we would have the right to have our criminal and significant civil matters decided by a jury of our peers. Preserving a just and free society can only be assured when its people are willing to participate in the justice system by making themselves available to serve on juries. Be truthful and honest in all of your dealings. Truth is at the foundation of character. Recently I had the honor and privilege to speak to a meeting of law enforcement here in South Sound and then another time to the law enforcement youth summer camp at the Washington State Patrol Academy. My subject was the importance to our citizens that law enforcement recognized that before they are guardians of our communities, they are guardians of the truth. 
I recounted many examples of political corruption stories that were as much about a cover-up as they were about the underlying offense. If we're going to insist on having trustworthy and honest leaders, we must first be a people that cherish and value honesty and integrity in our own private lives. Be generous. Good citizenship means that we would be willing to help those in need and not be concerned only with our own needs. There is a debate in the country today whether help for the needy should come from government or directly from its citizens. I don't think many doubt that the answer is both. My purpose here is not to engage in sorting out what needs are best met through the collective efforts of our governments and what can be best met by one neighbor looking after another and communities, how they can marshal together resources to help those who, for one reason or another, need a helping hand. What is important is that we are willing to sacrifice our time, our money, and our talents so that those who are seeking help will find it. As an aside, I am disturbed by the lack of information in our media outlets about the starvation and deaths occurring in East Africa, in the nations of Somalia, Kenya, Ethiopia, and others due in large part to a prolonged drought in the area. Here again, I am hearkening back to the importance of citizens being informed. How many here know that ten Tens of thousands have already died in Somalia from starvation and lack of water in the worst drought in over 60 years. And that half, half of Somalia's 3.7 million citizens are at risk. What is the obligation of our institutions of government? What is the obligation of each of us as citizens to engage more directly in addressing this disaster? I believe our obligations as citizens don't just extend to our own provincial interests, but also beyond our shores. Finally, be courageous. When fighting back terrorism, the best weapon we have is courage. If we refuse to be terrified or give in to fear, but instead boldly and bravely face the future, not retreating by seeking greater restrictions on our freedom, in exchange for more security. If we do this, we will at once be defeating terrorism and honoring those who, though they surely had some fear entering the burning World Trade Center, set those fears aside and acted in accordance with their duty and character. They died free. Our determination should be to honor and follow their example. We could enumerate many other obligations of citizens, the citizens of a free country, but I wanted to highlight that we honor those who died in the attacks on 9-11 best by dedicating ourselves, our fortunes, and our sacred honor to ensuring that the United States of America will remain a beacon to the world and a home to a brave, honest, diligent, and generous people for now and generations to come. So my message is, be good citizens worthy of those who protect us. I was humbled when asked to speak on this day. My sacrifices have been few compared to those who have given life or limb to preserve our freedom or to save the life of another and to those families who've lost loved ones. We have men and women in uniform serving us in far off places and serving us right here in our own community. We are indebted to them beyond any words that could be expressed here by someone who has been much more served than he himself has served. Even so, I'm here to express for myself and all here, to those who have and will continue to serve and protect us, especially to those here present, a profound thank you. God bless you as you have blessed us. And God, we ask you humbly 
to continue to bless this country. Thank you.